welcome to Organize with professional organizer Rachel Seavey. Every Sunday at 6 p.m., Rachel shares her expertise and compassionate approach to help you deal with overwhelming clutter. Rachel? Hey, collectors! Welcome to the Organize podcast. I am your host, professional organizer Rachel Seavey, and human being with relationship issues. So I'm super excited to have Jill Collins on the podcast. I absolutely adore Jill. I have to admit, I've done some relationship coaching with her and she is phenomenal. Uh, We are on the podcast today talking about the crazy eight pattern. Jill's going to tell us all about the crazy eight pattern and we're going to try and understand it because it affects our lives It affects our relationships, and it affects our clutter. I'll formally introduce Jill. She's got an amazing story. She's originally from the United States, and she's been dividing her time between Buenos Aires and Florida since 2001. After her husband's untimely death in 2016, Jill decided to reinvent herself, and she moved to Buenos Aires full-time. Having been happily married for 14 years and thus far removed from the dating scene, she soon realized just how different it was to be single as the dating world had changed significantly over the years. And she describes, it was awkward at first, but I learned to adapt. I signed up for all the typical sites, Tinder, Happnin, and Match.com, among others. It quickly became overwhelming. To my surprise, day and night, I found myself communicating with guys I didn't know, chatting for hours without even first personal contact. When I finally did strike up the courage to go out and meet someone, I quickly found that more often than not, there was no chemistry. So I spent all that time chatting with someone, going on a first date, only to realize we were not compatible. That special spark was missing. I would waste a month communicating with a man and would truly never get to know him. Sounds familiar, right, ladies? After hearing many stories from others who shared the same frustrations, Jill decided this seemingly useless game had to change. As the founder, president, and CEO of Lynx Resources, her business development experience experience and talents for matching clients with potential business prospects was put to use once again, but this time to focus on helping singles who wanted a lasting connection and who were serious about finding a partner to share their lives with. In 2017, she founded Destiny Matchmakers, a professional and private matchmaking surface for successful, relationship-minded men and women in Buenos Aires. She offers a one-on-one experience for those looking to meet the love of their life. Jill often calls Destiny the anti-Tinder, as her focus is not helping clients find one-night stands. Her clients' profiles are kept private and confidential and not shared online. Their old-school focus brings back the idea of personalized matching through face-to-face interviews with each and every client. The mission of Destiny Matchmakers is to connect individuals who are looking for serious, long-term relationships filled with passion, commitment, and respect while providing them with life skills and tools to actively pursue the life they've always dreamed of. Destiny is launching a new service called Destiny Connect, an opportunity for everyone to connect with people in person, getting them off of their phones and social media. It's an opportunity for individuals to be part of a club or network to meet in person at events and socialize with others they don't really know, people outside of their current social circles. As a certified life coach, Jill speaks on issues related to love and connection and works with her clients on a personal and specific level to help them reach their full potential in all areas of their lives. Jill's passion is to cure world loneliness, and she's dedicated to helping others find real connections and relationships with others. Oh my goodness, right? I feel like moving to Buenos Aires and just having her find me the love of my life, but that's besides the point. 
I am so excited to have Jill on the show. I can't wait to hear what she has to say about the Crazy 8 pattern. Hi, Jill. Thank you so much for being on the Hoardganized podcast. We're really excited to hear about what you have to say about the Crazy 8 pattern. Um, what the heck is the Crazy 8 Hey, Rachel. Eight how are you? I'm great. I'm happy <laughs> hey, Rachel, to have thanks. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for thanks for having me on your on your show. Um, the Crazy Eight pattern is uh, something developed by Tony Robbins, and uh, it's a it's a it's a way that we tend to behave when we get into we get stuck in our lives, and a lot of times um, we avoid real decisions like real um, quality decisions that we need to make, and so we end up staying in these safe patterns, these safe problems, as we, as he calls them, and the safe problems are things like um, those are the things that we do to kind of self-medicate sometimes, you know, like it could be uh, drinking alcohol or procrastinating or um, overeating or, you know, hoarding things, buying, shopping. We all like to shop. So, you know, those kinds of things when we say we need retail therapy, um, a lot of these things we do in order to avoid. I know I find myself sometimes when I'm, you know, wanting to get away and I'm always asking myself when I see I should be working or working on a project that, that I want to do and I know I need to get done. I find 50 million other things to do instead of that. And it's like, okay, what am I avoiding here and what do I need to do? What, what quality problem do I have that I need to solve and, get, and, and, and push through? So when I start looking for safe things, like, um, like I said, where I want to go, you know, I don't have a cigarette or, or I want to go out with friends or socialize or get on a call or look at social media, I have stopped sometimes and ask myself, what am I doing? And why am I, why, what am I avoiding? And a crazy age is something that we get into a lot of times. It happens to all of us. We, we often, um, like I said, we want to avoid things, but it can actually be a pattern and, and a habit that we develop. And some people live their lives in the state constantly where we experience depression or anger or resentment or bitterness. And that can come through a life experience that we might have had. Um, for my example, I lost my husband three years ago very suddenly. And as a result, I kind of was numb for very long and didn't know how to react. And I was just trying to treat and take care of myself and just feel good and not feel pain. And so I looked for ways to do that. And it's after three years, you know, kind of coming out of it, I'm feeling like, okay, I've got this and I have things I want to accomplish. I want to help other people. I want to have goals and ideas and business things I want to, I want to do. And so when I get to the point where I want to do something, uh, I'm thinking I go to the old behaviors and I think, okay, I feel sad or I feel depressed or um, I just want to, you know, isolate myself or whatever the, the feeling might be that gives me satisfaction. And then sometimes we have that side of it. The crazy eight is it's actually, let me explain it. It's, it's, it's an eight figure eight pattern. And we, we tend to bounce back and forth from a feeling of, of like, uh, anger or, uh, defiance. And then when we get angry and defiant for a while, then suddenly we get tired of that and we swing back to the other side and we go to like, disempowerment or depression and feeling sorry for ourselves and being a victim, feeling broken. And a lot of times when people say, for example, challenge us on something and say, hey, why are you so depressed, you know, or, or why are you isolating yourself? Then we swing back into that crazy day, the other side where we, we defend ourselves and we get angry. And in relationships, for example, when people are afraid to date, uh, I'm a matchmaker and have started my, I started my own business a couple of years ago. And it's really interesting how um, I thought that it would be a very simple business. You know, you just identify good possibilities, you talk, talk to them and introduce them. And I realized very quickly that it's actually not the case, that it's a lot of times people aren't ready and they, or they're afraid. And so we tend to um, uh, avoid wanting to be in a relationship. So we look for other ways or we find reasons or we, we make excuses and we say, oh, well, everyone's this way or someone is like that or I'll never meet anybody because it's always going to be the same way that it was before for me. And so that's a cycle of a crazy eight. And so the way that, I, I don't know if you want me to kind of elaborate some more or. Oh, yeah, um, please. Um, I guess we get into this just vicious cycle. It's like, I call it also like pain pockets where we fall into these pain pockets sometimes where we um, go to old patterns and old behaviors. Something triggers us. Like maybe if we're, we meet someone new and we're wanting to go out and date someone, meet a guy and we go out with him a couple of times and we see something that we saw before and mm -hmm. we go, oh. And then it triggers us right back where we were maybe 20 years ago. And we think, oh, that person's going to be like this. Mm -hmm. And so we, we tend to protect ourselves and then we isolate. Or we go in the other direction. And a lot of women, we, uh, we're very powerful today. We have a, we have a different uh, society today in that we can be very powerful and masculine in our, in our lives. 
and we do that in business and we function very well and very successfully, but we have a hard time sometimes bringing that into more of a feminine side when we're in a relationship. So we have our defenses and our walls up and we don't trust, trust men or trust others. And so it's really um, getting to that balance and saying, you know what, I'm tired of this. What can I do to change myself or how can I be better and how can I make an empowering choice to make a difference or make a change in my life? So that's kind of what the crazy eight is based on is just this swing, this pendulum back and forth of going between fear and anger to depression and sadness. So we bounce back and forth all the time and never can seem, and, and by feeding that, what we do to, to medicate ourselves, self-medicate is we do things like, you know, the gambling, uh, drinking, fighting, having affairs, smoking, um, just doing comp compulsive behavior, just being obsessive about things. And all of that is all about a way just to feel, find, feel certainty and find safety in our lives and, and to protect ourselves from being, from being, experiencing feeling pain. Makes a lot of sense. Was there yeah. anything else that you wanted to? I would just say that, you know, it's um, the, the hard part, I guess, the thing is to really identify the difference between these safe problems that we, we find uh, through our things that we want in life. Like we all have uh, six basic human needs. And I think you've addressed that with your, uh, your uh, viewers before. But um, the six basic human needs is that this is what, what we, why we stay in these crazy eight patterns is that it's meeting a need of some kind. Um, so by being um, a victim or feeling um, uh, depressed, people for a while will actually come and try to help us. And so when they do that, if we're feeling depressed, we get attention. So we get some significant of significance, which is like one of the six uh, human, basic human needs. And then the other way we do it is by something that we can always count on, whether it be a cigarette or a drink or socializing with a friend or having uh, unhealthy love relationships or affairs. There's some feeling of certainty and significance. And then also that, uh, like a, an affair can also be uh, a feeling of variety and uncertainty. So when we have two or three human needs of our six basic human needs that are being met, uh, it actually can become an addiction. So those are really strong, big strongholds in our lives and it makes it very difficult for us to break those patterns. But the ultimate thing is, is that the reality is, is that these safe problems are, and, and these crazy eight things that we do, the disempowering choices that we make um, to medicate, self-medicate, is that they're not sustainable. And we'll never find uh, lifelong happiness this way. We just keep bouncing back and forth between fear and anger and uh, sadness and depression. Uh, it's a pendulum swing. And so the way to get out of that is to funnel up and find a, 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 a good problem, a, um, a quality problem, and really identify what is it we're avoiding that we really want to do in our lives. Um, with the quality problems, it could be, you know, I, have a, I, have a, I want to take a risk and really go out and, and, and commit to this guy that I've been trying to see, but I'm afraid of him. I'm afraid to take a chance. I know he's a good guy, but I just am afraid to take that chance. Or, you know, in my case, when my husband died, it was, um, um, you know, I had a lot of things. I was house here in Buenos Aires, Argentina, and I just shipped all of my things from my other house in, in Florida, and I have a house with way too many things in it. And it's like I'm afraid to get rid of some of these things because they were part of my life before. Mm -hmm. And but I, I now I feel very bogged down and very cluttered. I feel suffocated a little bit in here because it's just there's too much. And so it's nice to have things, but I I recall when we first moved here like nine or ten years ago, the joy of having an empty place and being able to fill it from scratch was so exciting. And knowing that I had cabinets that were empty that I could you know like put things in, and I wasn't stacking things on top of top of other things. And just that feeling of I knew where everything was. I know that sounds so crazy but just that feeling of knowing where absolutely everything is and that he didn't think oh, I've got to clean out that closet one of these days you know that's just that's something else that just rolls around the back of our heads and just bogs us down and holds us back from doing the things that are really important in life like spending time with our families our kids uh, making a phone call feeling free to just move and, and breathe and um, so that is one of the things I have to work on myself so note to self later <laughs> <laughs> but um, but uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, overall, uh, just being aware of the crazy eight pattern, I think is a big step. That's the first thing. Um, the other thing I think is um, to really look at like, what is the one quality problem that you are really avoiding? Whenever you find yourself, when you see those, when you cannot figure out what those safe problems are, those little things that we tend to do to, to run away and avoid things, what is it that we are running from? If we can find that one thing, that one key thing that we are just pushing off and pushing away. There's one. We all have one at least. And 
facing it head on and saying, what is it? And then just saying, you know what, I'm going to tackle it. I'm just going to tackle it. And taking that step, find a baby step that just takes you in that direction. And once you start that baby step and take it in that direction, you just, then you can take the next step. I'm sure we've all had that great feeling where we, you know, you do one thing, like sometimes I know after my husband died, it was just like taking a shower or cleaning the, you know, like putting the dishes in the dishwasher. It was like a big chore, you know, but just doing that one thing or doing the laundry and getting it done and going, okay, now I can do something else. That great feeling when you did one thing and you, you just want to do something else after that, it, it, it doesn't take much, but just one step in that direction. And by, by changing our patterns and getting out of it and funneling up away from that crazy eight, there's a, there's a picture of it here. I don't know if I, you can see, but this is like the crazy eight pattern. And yeah. we can share it with your viewers after if you'd like. But, but yes. the idea is just, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pendulum. It just swings back and forth. And the idea is just to get into the, out of that and the empowering choices. And the way to do it is to start with one step and finding what that one thing that really would, would uh, touch, move, and inspire you to, um, to, want, to want to stop doing these things that we want to medicate ourselves with and, and avoid and, and procrastinate. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a pretty exciting topic, and I'm really thrilled to share it with you. Yeah, I um, thanks for sharing about, you know, your merging of two houses, too. That's that's interesting. I mean, I, I, I couldn't imagine and um, probably would be feeling the same way. So thank you for that. And, yeah. and then just the funneling up. I like that. That's just, you know, um, a good a good way to think of it kind of as a metaphor or, you know, you're just kind of getting out of there and you're funneling up and you're um, the safe problems are, is that what we're, yeah, the safe problems are so mm -hmm. easy to, to kind of revolve around and obsess on and, you know, focus on. Yeah. And, and I have just, gosh, you know, definitely been doing it myself in other areas. So it's, um, it's important to really know what you want, you know, so, so I'll, I'll have to take your advice as well. And I actually shared with my listeners in your intro that I'm doing some relationship coaching with you and encouraging oh. them to call you because you really um, gave me just a whole new perspective. And so maybe I could have you back on the show, like maybe about relationships because I know oh, a lot of my clients um, feel like they can't have any either because they can't let anyone in or just because they have so much to get done. How could they possibly, you know, spend time dating? So maybe that could be our next topic. Mm. <laughs> I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to come back anytime. It was great it. having you on the show. You. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Rachel. All right. Have a great weekend. Take care. You too. Bye-bye. It was really great having Jill on the show. She did a great job explaining the crazy eight pattern with you. She'd love to connect with anyone out there looking for life coaching, and she specializes in relationship coaching. So if you're interested in connecting with Jill, you can find her online on Instagram and Facebook under Destiny Matchmakers, or you can email her directly at Jill at destinymatchmakers.com. So collectors, how do crazy eight patterns affect your clutter, affect your organization and your home? It's a pendulum. One day you might be really sad about your clutter and you're depressed and so you self-nurture and you soothe, you know, by feeling sorry for yourself. I've been there too. You know, you find connection with yourself when you're depressed. And then others, um, they might feel sorry for you too, or give you some more attention if they notice you're depressed. So that's a way to get some connection there. But then what happens when you or someone else just nudges you to get out of your rut and you swing way to the other side and you get angry and you're angry at yourself and you're angry at your clutter and you're angry that no one understands. You're mad. You tell yourself you're going to get through that clutter and then you don't make the time to deal with your clutter and then you swing back into depression. So like Jill said, we all have and tend to focus on safe problems and the safe problem here is really your clutter. You know, you feel bad so you buy stuff and you keep stuff and you can share your frustrations about your clutter with friends or others or 
so let's take a moment. I love Jill's metaphor of funneling up. Let's funnel up for a moment and take a peek at what the true issue is. Why people self-medicate and why people overshop or compulsively save or don't make organizing a priority. It's, it's, you know, the true issue is deep down, we all want love. And your clutter is what's stopping you from receiving love. The big problem is that you might be lonely and you're filling the void with your cluttering. Does that make sense? Once you identify why you are cluttering and what the real issue is, it'll be a lot easier for you to begin to work on it. If you can get to the root of the clutter, the clutter will soon diminish. Life short collectors, we are not promised tomorrow. And if you don't change now, then in five years, you're going to be in the same place surrounded by clutter. If you keep doing what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. The time to change is now. If you want your life to change, you have got to change it. Tune in next week as I discuss visual thresholds. It's a term that I made up. I use it often, so I thought it deserved its own episode. It makes a lot of sense to me, especially when it's hard to figure out what goes where. If you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. Click the notification button and the thumbs up button and leave a comment. Jill and I would love to hear what you thought about this episode. Until next time, collectors, and remember, happiness is a place between too little and too much. Now, a short ad break from Clarity Coaching. Do you feel overwhelmed with clutter? Are you having trouble finding a place to start? Sometimes it's hard to ask for help, especially with all of the judgment and shame out there. What you need is an experienced, non-judgmental guide to help you navigate through your clutter chaos. I'm a guiding force that's going to help you empower yourself so you can live a happier, healthier, more organized life. I will take the time and I'm going to hold the space for you to understand your world, your dreams, your relationships, and your clutter. I do this with no judgment and no other agenda, but to help you achieve what you want most in life. And this, my dear collectors, is something that most people have never experienced. To experience the life that you truly desire, schedule your free clarity coaching session today by emailing me at rachel at collectorcare.com. That's Rachel at collectorcare.com. Or call me directly. I'm at 925-548-7750. That's in America. So that's area code 1-925-548-7750. Clarity consultations are complimentary for individuals seeking my coaching services, and they're very useful to make sure that we're the right fit for each other. Stop living in chaos and start living the organized life you desire. This has been Organized with Rachel C.V. New episodes are available every Sunday at 6 p.m. and also on the Collector Care YouTube channel. Download Rachel's Affirmations for Collectors on iTunes or Amazon.com or sign up for Rachel's blog at CollectorCare.com and receive seven tips for clutter-free living. Thanks for listening.